everyone, it's Jared here, and today we're gonna to talk about building left foot independence. Now, it was on my personal Facebook page, I asked you guys, I said, I'm filming some lessons, what do you want to talk about? And a few of you said, well, one of you said left foot independence, and then a few other you guys liked it. And so I figured, why don't we do a lesson on left foot independence? And so I've put together five separate exercises for you. And we're gonna run through those at two separate tempos at the end of the video. But I first wanna talk about just some techniques that you can use when going through these exercises, okay? So first, we can talk about how does your left foot sit? You'll see my left foot is just sitting on the pedal like that. Now when I go to actually perform a hit or move it up and down, normally, I'll keep my heel off and then I bring it up and then drop it down like that, okay? It's rare that I keep my heel on the footboard all the time unless I'm playing some sort of jazz thing where I want that kind of rocking motion like this. So normally when I'm performing hi-hat foot strokes, it sounds like this. And you see, I'm doing kind of a quarter note pulse there, but you see my leg kind of bouncing. And that's just something I developed on my own to kind of help me keep time and feel the eighth notes. And, and I feel it just gives me overall a better sense of time. And the next thing I want to quickly touch on is why you need to develop your left foot. Um, this is so important just as a timekeeper in music. You know, and when a band, when you're playing as a band all together, a lot of people, um, musicians, your bandmates, will look at this for their time reference. Where is the quarter note? And it's something you can keep going in really soft parts and kind of give them some time reference and stuff like that. So whenever I'm playing, um, in general, I like to keep this going. If it's not like hi-hat foot strokes, I'll even just keep the back of my foot bouncing like that. Okay? So the first exercise we have just goes on basic quarter notes. Then number two, we're going on straight eighth notes. Number three, we're just hitting the off beats. So one and two and three and four and, or up beats. I know some of you guys call them up beats. And then number four and five are a little bit unique. And I just wanna quickly talk about those. Number four, we're going into splashing. Now, what I do to splash in the hi-hat, now I have big feet, and so some of you, if you have smaller feet, you won't have to do it exactly like I'm doing it. But in order to splash, what I do is I bring up my foot and then I hit it with my heel back here, just hard enough that the cymbals splash together, like this. And then I bring my foot back down and perform a high foot stroke, like that. So all in one motion, it would sound like this. Okay, so what you'll find when you do that, when you actually practice exercise number four, you're gonna be thrown off balance, especially at the slower tempos. And you'll see me, I even like adjust my body a little bit to the right when I'm doing that, uh, just because my left foot's not used to moving that much. I don't do that sort of thing that often, but it's still really, really good to learn. Exercise five, we're actually applying the heel-toe technique to the hi-hat pedal. And it's what I've always told people. People say, oh, I don't need to learn heel-toe technique. I don't play double pedal. Well. We're all double pedal drummers if you use a hi-hat foot pedal. Does that make any sense? <laughs> okay, so what I do there is basically apply the heel-toe technique and that would look exactly like this. So the splash lands on the and and the other, the closed note lands on the ah. And so you can get some really cool patterns going um, and you can do other stuff completely with your bass drum because basically the motion of your leg is only landing on the ands. So one and, two and, three and, four and. Look at what my leg is doing. Only doing one motion. So it's really easy to, to come up with really complex sounding patterns. You can sound like two drummers and you're really only one person. So with that said, you guys, I want to get to the exercises so you guys can see exactly how these sound. Then you can go ahead and download the sheet music. And I have one more thing to talk to you about at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around.
All right, you guys, so that is the end of the video on building left foot hi-hat independence. Now, if you guys have any more of these questions, please just head over to my Facebook page, like it, leave your questions, leave your comments there. I'm, I hang out there all the time and I chat, you'll see on my page, I'm chatting with almost every single person who leaves a message. And so go ahead and do that. Also, please answer this one question. Is it a habit for you to currently open your hi-hat in some form within a groove. So if you're playing the ride cymbal, do you always kind of rock your foot? Do you always open your hat in quarters or ends? Or is it something that you've neglected and haven't paid a lot of attention to? So leave your comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video.